uh, known as a potter who shaped and fashioned people on the potter's wheel. But do you think that he's going to use anything that has anything to do with our culture and our history? No. He strictly goes on the Bible. Here's a man who is an agent, in my opinion, for the imperialist. And then you have the infamous, or well, I'll, I'll, I'll say famous, Creflo Dollar, very remarkable megachurch preacher. And here are his foundational beliefs. He says the Bible is the written and inspired word of God. It is amazing that we let people with that little bit of knowledge hold us at bay for hours every Sunday. You know, this is 2007 according to the Roman calendar, and we are now in the age of information, and there is no excuse now to say that in 2007 that the Bible is the written, inspired word of God. That sounds good, but it just ain't the case. And people in positions such as Creflo Dollar ought to know better than that. We, we ought to be telling the people the truth. He says that tithing is our covenant connector. Wow, now that, that's not surprising right there. Of course it is. It is your connection to the lifestyle that you live. He says that giving determines the amount of our increase. That is really a crime right there. Now, I don't care how much you give. If you're working at Walmart's, Walmart, you're not going to live the life like Creflo Dollar. You're not going to have your private jets and things like that, okay, and your Bentley and whatever else he has. I don't care how much you give. Don't fall for, again, that fox trap. Those are the trappings. Keep your ears perked. Keep your eyes open. <clears throat> he also supported an illegal war, which we'll get into later. And, <clears throat> excuse me. He's also more dedicated to Christianity than to his own people. Here's Creflo. Uh, this is supposed to be a picture here at his home with his wife, Taffy. In the background, we see uh, a white angel and a white Jesus. I mean, do you think that you would ever go into any white minister's house and see a picture of a black Jesus on their wall? I just don't think so. It's embarrassing that we have people like this that are actually considered our leaders and have been able to uh, create these big giant mega church pre uh, 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 ministries. It's just incredible. Here are some of his words that he sent in a letter to his congregation. And if you have a fireplace, I would Put that in the fireplace to generate more heat in the wintertime. When a nation is on the brink of war, the worst thing its citizens can do is allow themselves to become divided. He, talking about George Bush, is a man who rises early every morning to seek God and his wisdom through prayer and the study of the word. Now, the only person that is supposed to know what Bush does when he rises early in the morning is Mrs. Bush. I just don't know how he's able to know what Bush does when he gets up in the morning. I hear a lot of kiss kiss on this right here. You're talking about brown nose. And I don't know if he got paid for this, but I'm sure he got paid if it wasn't directly, indirectly for these comments in support of a man who's got our uh, youth over there in a the war dying every day. Our tax dollars, billions of dollars. Uh millions a day, billions a day, being supported in an illegal war. The man, talking again about George Bush, in the Oval Office is the one we, as, Af as, as Americans, voted in. I don't know if he actually watched the, uh, the, uh, uh, the actual events that transpired during that whole presidential election, because there were many in fact, most who did not vote for Bush, but were, you know, but Bush wound up getting in the office. So I, I really don't know. This seems like a, a real kiss job to me. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know what his point is. He said, you are foremost a Christian. 
which is amazing. And he said, I declare that he, talking about George Bush, is a man of wisdom and he is strengthened and guided by the Holy Spirit. Wow. I wholeheartedly support the decision he makes for this country. Wow. And he said that I want you to show your support for him by calling his name out before God. Now, at this point in time, I think that you should pause the DVD, take a deep breath, get your drink of water, and then come back because I know that probably knocked you out of the chair that you were sitting in. There's a, 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 a pastor here, and I mean, this is actually, you can see him and Eddie Long probably have the same um, uh, producer or agent or photographer or whatever, because they are joined at the hip. I think Eddie Long bishoptized him, if that's a word. But uh, Gary Hawkins is one of these preachers that really makes no bones about the fact that he's about money. And I, I mean, I respect that. He's like George Bush. George Bush lets you know what he's about. I mean, at least he's not like Clinton will smile in your face and then be implementing programs uh, that will result in our uh, demise. Gary Hawkins is about that money. He is a person, he, he said he's, he's got a book out. I'm not going to mention the name of the book because I really uh, don't think it's necessary. But he, in the book, he says, Jesus Christ is the product. The church is the salesperson. And the world is the audience. There you go. Tell him, Gary. He says that to reach and disciple the unchurched with love and simplicity is his, uh, that's his mission. To reach the unchurched. Now, I'm wondering, why do you want to reach the unchurched? If I don't go to church, but I'm not out here killing and robbing and stealing and I'm patronizing our black stores and I'm doing everything in my power to be a productive citizen. Why do I have to go to church, Gary? Why is it so necessary that you reach the, the, the unchurched? Well, because he's a Christian. And if you don't go to church and if you don't accept Jesus as your personal savior, then, of course, we're going to go to hell. Never, he said, never, this is in his book, never ignore the media's request for information or an interview. <clears throat> wow. He says, giving a hug is a weapon. Now, usually when I give a hug to people that I know, people that I love, people that come to hear my lectures, it's not a weapon. I give them a hug because I genuinely love people. I love my people. I think that's a prerequisite for anybody that gets in front of their people. I don't think, I'm not foremost a Christian. I'm foremost a man. I'm foremost a black man. And I'm foremost a lover of my people. I'm not foremost a Christian. So if you give me a hug, it's genuine. He says that giving a hug is a weapon, in other words, the more hugs you get, the more likely you are to get people to join your church. These men are incredible. They really are. He said, don't be afraid to remove people who are not operating in their gifts. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that. Don't be afraid to remove people who are not operating in their gifts. Now, if that is not a pimp, I don't know what it is because a pimp will let go of any one of his women that are not operating in their gifts. <clears throat> There's no mention in his book at all about black liberation. It is a gross misuse of money in which we'll see uh, later about, uh, about this man uh, that we call Gary Hawkins. And he has a church here in Atlanta uh, called Voices of Faith. And here's, I call him the billboard man. He's got billboards all over Metro Atlanta. He even got a special billboard just for Easter. I'm sure he paid more money because, you know, this is a, 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 a special event. Here we see that this eight o'clock uh, service is gonna last 
uh, 8, 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock, Easter Sunday. He's not worried about the money that he spent because you know we're going to come there with our white on and our suits on and our hats and our new purses and we're going to fall right into that same trap that a fox knows not to fall into. When will we ever learn? We're just not growing as a people. And it's people like him that keeps perpetuating this stupidity and this ignorance. <clears throat> Leaders encourage us to read books by our and other great educators and scholars. We don't do that. We don't read books by... How many times have you heard T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Eddie Long say, you know what, I want you to read what John Henry Clark says. I want you to read what Francis Cress Welsing, what Dr. Ben, what Ivan Van Sertima says. I want you to read about uh, what Chancellor Williams and John S. Embiidi, and I want you to read about some of what our great scholars have to say. Never. They're going to tell you that the, they want you to read their books, though. He motions and any other things that they produce. It's really incredible. You know, we're going to have to step our game up to become more aware, more conscious, and just more, stu more student-like. We're going to have to become scholars and be aware. Again, I keep going back to that fox for a reason, because a fox is hard to trap. We're very easy, very gullible as a people. Build and we will come. Preach and we will be there. Very gullible. Again, we have the blind leading the blind. Here it is at Christmas time. Here in Georgia, we say Krima. Here we are at Christmas time and he says, Happy birthday, Jesus. Now, here's a man who is not even sophisticated or knowledgeable enough to know that this was not Jesus' birthday, that there have been, been many saviors that refer to themselves as the light of the world, that died on the cross, that was born on December 25th. I mean, this is like basic consciousness, uh, basic spiritual consciousness 101. And he actually, I mean, I knew as a teenager that there were uh, there were actually arguments that were out here concerning the actual birth date of Jesus. These, this is basic. That there were many uh, figureheads and God men and, and heroes that were born of a virgin birth that uh, 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 ascended uh, into heaven. And um, were, you know, healers and, and walked on water. These are old stories. And if he knew anything about astrology, you would know why that date of December 25th was the date that was picked for most of these God men. But you don't study that. But yet he has us at bay every Sunday. And he actually had a billboard that says, Happy Birthday, Jesus. Now we move into uh, Miss Juanita Bynum that we know, uh, you know, just had some incidents. And I'm glad she's okay. I don't want any of our sisters to be hurt. But I mean, you know, I'm so tired. People are seeing the white Jesus in the background. When are we going to stop that? Do you think that a white person would ever come on your show with a black Jesus in the background? Now, she's a T.D. Jakes disciple. She considers herself a prophetess. We know now that she could not prophesy everything that came her way. She's now the new face of domestic violence, she says. But now, isn't that strange? You can become the new face of domestic violence. I think that you should be the face of the violence in the Bible. Be the face of violence in the Bible because you, we all heard of 
mega fest. Well, the Old Testament is murder fest. Uh, she has all the time supernatural claims of God's going to bless you. God's going to do this. And she pushes the right buttons. I've never heard the woman actually teach. She is a cheerleader. And she is an, a person who knows what to say in, in, in order to generate the response, the desired response that she's looking for every Sunday. This whole face of domestic violence is going to be an additional source of income for her. Why aren't you the face of the misogyny that we see in the Bible? I mean, you know, if women had to wrote the Bible, I don't think we'd be sitting up here talking about he all the time and he's good. And, and all of the great prophets are men. Women were uh, enslaved themselves. Matter of fact, more of them died uh, in the name of Christianity than, actually, than men actually did. She is a manufacturer of amens. She knows exactly how to, how to get those amens. She's very wasteful, as we'll see. We'll, we, we also must know that Leaders are concerned with our collective salvation. I've said many times, what is the point in us winning our little small, trivial, minute, individual salvation battles, but yet we as a people lose the collective war? What's the point? Okay, Sister Jones is saved. What does that have to do with the 35 million of us who are teetering on the fringes of becoming obsolete? What is Sister Jones's uh, little, well, it starts with the individual. The individual is nothing without the group. When something happens to an individual, the group is affected. Now, here we are. She had a million dollar wedding. Okay. A million dollar wedding. And I don't know, she, I'm, I'm not judging, but I, I don't. I don't know, she just, they, neither one of them looked very happy on this picture, but, but this is their million dollar wedding. Now, to me, that's, that's not good. That's not right for you as a so-called woman of God to have a million dollar wedding. Why isn't that good? Our colleges are in trouble. All over the country. And it's a fact that when we go to our HBCUs, there's a higher graduation rate. In fact, 65% of our doctors graduated from historically black colleges. 50% of our engineers graduated from historically uh, black colleges. Church leaders encouraging athletes to attend or give to HBCUs. Why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they encouraging the athletes to give to these colleges? They're in positions to do that. It's a shame that our athletes, uh, you know, are used. They think that they're, uh, uh, like my partner in Cincinnati says, he says they think that they are getting paid, but they are really getting played. Here we are, they spending money on billboards and Bentleys and planes and TV ministries, etc. And they have integrated churches, so they can't really address our, our specific needs. And they're about individual prosperity. You know, I think this is a shame that all of this is going on over here, but yet the colleges are in trouble. I don't care what you say. Like I said to my other lecture, our savior uh, is our children's education. Here's a church here in Atlanta called Destiny Metropolitan Worship Church. And they have creative ideas for sacrificial giving. Now, here's one of the things now that after we go through this, you might want to get up again, stretch, get you a cup of coffee, a drink of water, go outside, pet the dog, because this is really amazing right here that this is actually going on. You talk about pimps, you talk about something that just is just irrelevant to our whole progress as a people. We would rather go down, we would rather make individual money and pay our money to these mega church preachers. I mean, we, we would rather go down as a people than to stop doing what we're doing. 
That's exactly what we're doing. We're not competing out here. Let me show you what we're doing. And this is not an isolated case right here. This is not uh, something that this church is just doing. Number one, this is in their actual manual. It says minimize the times you eat out. This is so you can tithe more. But then what are they going to do with the tithe money? Hold a garage sale. Take a part-time job. This is actually in their manual. Have your family look for spare change around the house, under the couches, under the bed, between the mattresses, in the closet corner. Postpone major purchases. Wow. How do you know what those major purchases, you know, I, how, how I'm almost speechless. How do you know what the, you know the significance is of these major purchases that I you know I may have a need to get something. Make crafts and sell them. <laughs> Give your stock dividends, stocks, bonds, or tax refunds. This is what they're encouraging us to do. And. I'm going to repeat this twice. Make the church the beneficiary in your will and estate. Make church beneficiary in will and estate. This is in their actual manual, creative ideas for sacrificial giving. And they're not alone. This is what these churches are doing to us. We're getting pimped. Let's look at this next thing right here. Again, I'm going to go back to this fox trap because it's so important. I don't mean to harp on this, but I mean, you, you got to be aware of this thing right here on the right. Okay. And let's look and see how the preachers fell into this trap again. You remember the Da Vinci Code? Well, the Da Vinci Code, we fell right back into it. It perpetuates the notion of white supremacy. This is what the movie did because it is a psychological anointing of the world's white minority. Everybody in it, every word stated, all the descendants of this so-called Jesus was Caucasian. And, you know, we just sat by, none of the preachers protested, we let it happen. They placed Caucasian people places and things in the center of the human universe and link them to all that is holy, godly, and divine. Had absolutely nothing to do with you. Ignored you and you never said a word. Even the, the passion of the Christ. Not one black preacher. In fact, black preachers were encouraging their congregation to go see it. Now, they're teaching us to be religious, not spiritual. You know, look at our language. Even the term God is a religious term. Him, I believe in a higher power. We traded knowledge for belief. We're bound by a book. That's religion. Religion is prayer. Prayer is actually coming, uh, 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 going outside of yourself, seeking the assistance from something outside of your body to help you within. That's prayer. And as Professor Walter Weaver said, pr prayer is actually a form of begging. Uh, we'll pray and we'll pray and we'll pray and there's not a lot that gets done collectively. And what happens is many of our leaders, before we decide, you know, if we're called upon to uh, assist the community, if the leaders are called upon, the so-called leaders are called upon to, you know, uh, uh, where there's a crisis in, in the black community, the first thing that they'll do is they'll say, uh, let us pray. 
Now see what this does is automatically create a mindset that will now expect godly intervention in something that is entirely human. It's going to take human will, human sacrifice, uh, human work, and it's going to take human uh, interaction between human beings. But when you say, let us pray, we're now going to expect the miracle. That has been, in my opinion, detrimental to many of our, uh, our movements. And if you live by the supernatural, you're going to die by the supernatural. And that's what we're doing right now. Closed. Religion is closed to other ideologies. In fact, we are suffering from the disease of closed mindedness. Real, uh, spirituality, on the other hand, is we perceive ourselves as gods and goddesses. There is something within us. We are made of the same stuff. We recognize that God is male and female. You can't have anything without the female. I know the higher power is in me and of me. I'm about, uh, I'm not bound by a book. I am bound by principles. I don't ever remember sitting down and telling any one of my children, you know, it's bad to kill somebody. Now, one of my children, when they were little, they got caught stealing something. They knew it was wrong. and That's why they were trying to hide it. And I very politely told the manager what they were doing. They didn't have, they never did that again. But these are principles. In fact, the non-Christians, they really don't have anything on us in terms of, of principles. You know, did I not tell you the truth? Did I?